what is up guys it's your boy Gandoso and welcome back to a really quick video um as some of you may know fl just came out with a new version which is 20.6 point a bunch of numbers but in this version they actually added some new features some actually pretty interesting features that could potentially uh kind of make a fellow step up to some other DAWs when it comes to sampling especially ableton because if you go to the mixer and you add a you know a plugin let's say on uh, track 20 whatever you can add new time which is a new plugin that basically uh enables time warping for samples the same thing that you would do in Ableton when you want to, you know, work with samples. But the problem uh, that I have with it so far, uh, I haven't got the chance to actually work too much with it. I just installed it. But if I want to add some, I don't know, jazz samples, let's say. Let's say this one. I don't know. If you drag it in, it's automatically going to analyze uh, the sample and it's going to try to find the, the main beat and add markers now the issue with this is first of all as you can see there are a lot of markers and yeah i think you can select and delete them but by doing that you're actually deleting the whole thing not just you know deleting uh the markers also i just got an error which okay it didn't crash a fell but still you can't control z to add them back so there's that also, it's a bit janky right now. I don't know if there's some secrets to it, but um, it's not the easiest, as you can see, to add samples necessarily, uh, add markers and shit. Like right now, it's not even working because of the, the, the error, probably. So I have to uh, re add new time and the sample again. So already from the get go, it is kind of painful to work with and you know if you want to start the the sample let's say from the first bar where where you would normally want your sample to start from uh also adding markers is a bit interesting but i guess you could maybe change the the grid magnet thingy but i don't really see uh any options like you can no never mind all right so you can actually uh, move it as you please but it's still a bit inconvenient to do this now of course if you're only working with FL then you're bound to learn this after playing with it but you know as someone who has uh, the option to work with Ableton as well I wouldn't necessarily want to learn this I might as well just drag the sample in Ableton uh, do my thing with it there and then drag it back in FL if I actually want to work in FL so yeah uh, maybe I'll actually get to work with this more and uh, maybe make like a dedicated video to it about it but uh in this video i'm actually not gonna talk about this i'm actually gonna talk about their new thing other new thing because they have a lot of new things but in particular uh destructor so this is basically nothing new uh but what it does is basically kind of uh creating like some sort of a pedal rack i suppose to add effects like distortion, mostly this distortion since it's called Destructor. So you can, uh, you know, distort things, then add the filter and chorus and whatever, so you can actually get rid of these. So I'm actually going to show you guys, you know, a new way of distorting 808s from what I've played with it. And of course, you can polish this and make it uh, sound better by actually adding some extra effects like EQ and so on. But if you go, I don't know, let's use... Um, a generic 808 right so i actually have it loaded and uh you know this is how normally the 808 sounds like pretty uh generic like trap trap beat 808 not necessarily mainstream trap but you know dark trap and shit so now if i actually add uh destructor to the right um channel so destructor on my 808 right from the get-go it's gonna sound like this now, it's gonna sound flangery because of the chorus, so I'm actually gonna remove it. And I'll also remove the filter because uh, we already have a filter somewhat in the distortion tab. So now it's gonna sound like this. It's pretty boomy. Uh, if you actually disable the speaker, uh, it's not gonna sound as bassy. So you can choose to use it or not. I'd rather use it just so I have those extra low frequencies 
uh, which I can always EQ out, but I can't really add them back in if I don't have it in the first place. So I'm just going to leave this here. Probably won't tweak it. Uh, although what I would tweak it is maybe make the whole thing mono, or I think you can make it mono by turning the stereo separation uh, to like 100%, like merging them. Yeah, just so uh, it's not going to sound fucky. But as I said, you can play with the distortion, you can change the way it's distorting and what it's using. And as you can see, there's blood overdrive, there's, there's fast distort, there's soft clipper. So it's basically taking something that's already existing and kind of turning it into a new method. Uh, which is actually a bit more interesting than using the, the actual plugins, you know, that, that, it's, that are being used in this, such as, you know, blood overdrive. So far, uh, my favorite has to be like Harmor Cube because it's so easy to play it, play with it and make it sound, uh, you know, in my case, how I want it to sound. So maybe turning the wet level a bit up and maybe like the filter cut and the mix down a bit. And also this uh, asymmetry knob I don't know exactly how it's working because it's weird. If you just play with it, turn it to the right and to the left while also playing the note, you'll hear that it's pretty interesting. See, like, it does not nothing, basically. Like, it, it negates all of the effects if you put it uh, on 100% stereo asymmetry, but then if you put it on merge 100%, I think, or mono, kind of identical I don't know but I uh, I can see some some potential while actually automating it and having some weird like transitions or kind of like a like a new way of making the stutters on 808 like I don't know you can play with it it's pretty interesting not gonna lie but I mean, this basically uh, makes you not have to use, you know, Camel Crusher anymore because it's built in. Uh, you don't have to fuck around with the actual plugins like using, you know, Blood Overdrive or Fast Distort or any other VSTs, not necessarily VSTs, but uh, built in uh, distortion plugins. And this also works with guitars because I actually, I actually tried using uh, the guitar that I made for the Zilla Kami video, I think. And if I synchronize it real quick, and let's say put it on a different channel and let's add destructor. Of course, it's going to sound a bit weird by default. So let's get rid of the chorus and the filter. And let's put this to Harmor Cube. See what I mean? Like if you don't, uh, if you don't actually fuck with the stereo separation output, and merge it, uh, this asym asymmetry, whatever how you pronounce it, really makes it sound weird, like the signal is dying. So it's really interesting. I don't know exactly how this works, but it's, it's weird. And as, you, as I said, you can play with it and uh, figure it out by yourself, uh, or maybe find a way to, to use it. Uh, you know, at its full potential, I suppose. Also, a really nice thing about it is that um, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, clipping everything by using this uh, plugin, I suppose, or effect, because it has a soft clip output option. So let's go, if you go back to the 808, actually, um, and if I play the 808 now, and if I disable the soft clip, you might actually hear no difference because of the limiter, but let's see now. There is a tiny, tiny difference, but uh, you'll notice it when you have like the mix on 100 and, you know, boosting the volume as well, like in this case. Now you can actually tell the difference, not only by hearing it, but by actually looking at the volume peaking thingy. Like if you look closely here, uh, this is when it has soft clip on it. It clearly stops at 0 dB, but then if you turn it off, it goes all the way up to 3. So imagine increasing this to like, you know what I mean? But then with the soft clip, 
it's like pure distortion, but it's not gonna overclip everything because it has soft clipper, which is pretty, pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, as I said, this is a pretty cool way of uh, distorting 808s now, and not only 808s, uh, you know, bass in general or uh, samples as well, so you can really have fun with this. Now, uh, I might still have to play with New Time, see what it does exactly, I mean, how it works, because I know what it does, but uh, right now I'm not comfortable enough to use it as it is, the amount of knowledge that I have about it, so maybe, I don't know, I'm low-key expecting a video from Dylan Talchief, I think, if he's gonna make one about, like, the new features, maybe he's gonna explain a bit better uh, how things work about new time. Then again, you also have Fruity Granalyzer, which now has a waveform, uh, which is a really interesting thing. It's a really interesting plugin or effect, especially if you have a MIDI keyboard that also has knobs, because you can actually link the knobs and really fuck up some sounds, like really make some weird shit, especially if you're into EDM and you want to make some alternative, uh, really in industrial sounding sounds. This is really cool. Or if you want to make some weird vocal samples, I guess that works too. But yeah, you can actually check out ImageLine's post probably. They have like a, a post on their website that actually probably goes into more details about what's new. So I highly suggest you guys do that if you're actually interested in the new update. But that's about it with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to support me, you can uh, you know subscribe to my channel. Also buy my drum kits. And uh, you still have three days left to get my uh, my new merch because it's limited time offer, so you have all of the info in my uh, description. But yeah, it was your boy Gonzo, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.